Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Uh, and today, I have very, very special guest. I absolutely appreciate the fact that you've uh, you've let me interview you. International porn star, Mar- Marco Napoli. How are you? <laughs> it's always going to make me laugh, but I am great. Thank well, you. Well, you got to take it. If it's you, I'll, you got to take, take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. So what? where can we start? Let's start with, first and foremost... Uh, the pandemic, which is now kind of, you know, like we're, we're gearing our way into some kind of normalcy. We're taking um, off our masks outside exactly. as, as of this broadcast. If you yeah. want to know where we are on the timeline, yeah. this, is the, this is the, we can take our masks off outside. We're vaccinated. You're likely vaccinated, yes. you know, so we're, we're about there. We're yeah. about there. We're coming, we're coming down the end of the slide here. You have a very interesting outtake of it too, because you were in, you were in Italy. I was, I was. So I have two citizenships. I'm American born, um, but my fam- I have a lot of family in Italy. I live half the year in Italy and I was able to spend most of last year there. So there was that break in the pandemic in the summer, in, at least in Europe, you know, where it had quieted down. They had the big celebration on the bridge mm-hmm. in Prague. I was able to go to Prague, you know, because they had kind of defeated that first wave. And so I was there in Italy from June uh, until February of this year. And then it was about September, October, things started getting worse in Spain mm-hmm. and then France and then Italy. So I was locked down, <laughs> locked down in Milan yeah. for a few months, not on any other occasion. Wouldn't it be such a bad place to be locked down? It's beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. And you know, and it was the second lockdown was not like the first, I was in Los Angeles for the first lockdown, uh, in the spring of 2020. Uh, and in Italy at that time, people were in their homes mm-hmm. period. You could leave once a week to go shopping. Um, but last fall it was a little bit lighter. You could go out and shop, you know, you could go out and buy things and they would not stop you on the street. So, but I was home, I was just chilling in my apartment and editing and, uh, and zoom calling everybody I knew and, and just getting ready to come back to the States. Did you shoot while you were there? I did. I did. It's funny because, you know, you find people, you find people wherever you are, you find them on Grindr, you find them, uh, where you have to find them word of mouth, Twitter, and there were some guys on Instagram that I knew in Milan, and and there's a sex store uh, in Milan. He, he says it's the only uh, gay sex store in Italy, Studio Know How. I shot a scene there. Um, but you find these people, and I found two guys, Rudy and Costa, who uh, who are now, you know, becoming porn stars themselves. You know, they had literally just started, and we had done a scene together, and now they're blowing up down in Puerto Vallarta. So I'm like, hey. Everybody's that's, in Puerto Vallarta. What's going on? That's the place where they're filming. Yeah, okay. That's the place to go. <laughs> so yeah, so now I found guys like that in uh, in Italy. And when, you know, when we were more allowed to do more anonymous stuff on the fan sites, when they weren't checking everything about everybody that you post with, you know, you could do more things with people where maybe their face wasn't in there, but you got a good load on you or in you mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh so no. I, I, I may do. You know, I kept, I kept, I kept the content coming, and I did a lot of solo stuff. Lockdown for me was also a lot of like hole stretching and buying new toys, and you know, like new yeah. new avenues to new, yeah. to amuse myself and <laughs> yeah. to amuse my fans. You know, hopefully they're hopefully they're getting into my my hole stretching journey. I was going to say, do you um, are you hole stretching with a purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think we we're going to go there right at the oh, beginning. Oh no, yeah. But, you well, know, well, let's we dive are. in. Let's no talk pun. about hole stretching today. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, <laughs> with a purpose. Yeah. 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 You're, you're doing I'm all it. stretching you're, with a purpose. You're going. I, <laughs> you're going there. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I look at the people that I love in this industry. Who who do I watch? Mm-hmm. You know, John Thomas in London okay. yeah. is a god to me. You know, and mm-hmm. when I met him and I saw him uh, at London Pride, there were all these beautiful guys in the porn industry just, I mean, London in general, they're beautiful mm-hmm. men everywhere. Yeah. And it was pride. And I saw him and I said, Oh my God. I'm like, that's a superstar. I'm like, that's John, isn't it? And he'd be like, Oh yeah, go say hello. He's super nice. So he's somebody that I've always watched. And that man can take, mm. can take a lot. <laughs> so you're striving for that. You're... I don't know that I'll ever get yeah. to that level. I don't think there's <laughs> going to be arms in me. And I don't, I don't know that I would be able to like go to a to go to a show and, and just be able to have somebody punch me like that. Um, I look at it, I'm in awe of it. Mm. I love those men. I love him. I love Teddy Bryce. I, I love those kind of extreme whole play guys, you know, and I think they're, 
they're superstars. They're oh. they're anal athletes, yeah. you know. And it's like it's so, like the, <laughs> so many good band names. Whole I mean, play and they, that's, uh, <laughs> I mean, no, I, I seriously like. I don't know. You know, as as time goes by, you get older. You've done lots of this. You've done lots of that. It's like it's the next frontier. Everybody's doing it now. It's very trendy. It's yeah, on trend. Tre- <laughs> I, hmm. But it's it's. <laughs> It's so intense and it's so amazing. And I, you know, I I played with a little guy who got his hand in me once years ago. And I remembered like, oh my God, like that was incredible. Like I need to do that again. Like it wasn't like a, "Mm, that was curious or Mm -hmm. it was instantly like, okay, this, I don't know how, I don't know when, but this is going to happen again. And it's, it takes work. It Mm -hmm. takes practice. And I was lazy and it was not a priority. (laughs) You know, it just wasn't, I'm having too much fun doing this, doing that. Even, you know, even filming, mm-hmm. um, it was never like the next thing to do. But then, you know, like I said, lockdown was there and I was like, all right, here's the time. Get some new toys, see okay. what happens. And, um, I talked to all those guys, you know, I've, I've, uh, ingratiated myself into the fisting community and just gotten to know everyone and be like, all right, what do I do? And, uh. They're all very impressed. Mm. I show them my progress. <laughs> <laughs> how how do your videos do on OnlyFans and just your fans? And They're stuff? doing great. Yeah. I'm I'm really thrilled. The, well, I mean, like the I'm solo really ones, thrilled. the stream, stretching ones. And I stuff don't and, think so. Here's the deal. Yeah. Like, here's the issue. It's like finding a brand for myself. Like those men I mentioned, right? That is their brand. That's who they mm-hmm. are. I really like a bit too much of everything. So I don't know. I don't know if I have to do a separate page, a separate storyline, mm-hmm. a separate oh. name. Like, I don't know. I don't know if the people that follow me will continue to follow me. If I'm going to find a whole new following, I don't know. I don't know. I just know, you know, when I do porn, especially for the fan sites, I want to be true to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the reason people like me and follow me is because they can see in my face when I'm having fun mm-hmm. and I'm having a fucking blast doing Great. this. Like, this is crazy. This was not the plan. As I told you about, you know, this was not the plan to be, to be doing porn and to be successful in it, but it's so much fun and it's so wonderful. And I'm meeting these guys that I'm like, so in love with, I fall in love with everybody. Um, and so I want people to see that still in my face. I want people to people to see that I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep churning out scenes you know, just for the sake just of doing the, yeah. scenes, this is the new popular guy. Okay. I have to fuck him or he has to fuck me. Okay. And here it is. And, and have them be like, Oh yeah, he's really yeah. phoning in this one. And you can always, you can always tell. feel that. Absolutely. People can tell. Absolutely. Um, uh, really quick, because you didn't mention, um, uh, falling in love and like how many people you're meeting here and stuff. You're, and also related to the pandemic, you came from a different background where you started out in healthcare. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can we go there? Is that- I'm I'm a licensed pharmacist. Okay. I was I was very afraid to uh, to have people know that at first. I thought they were going to like find me and yank away my license. It's so. I mean, and I meet so many people. I'm not going to out anybody, but I've met so many people in this profession. You know, because this profession is always portrayed as a profession of last resort, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. oh, you you couldn't do anything else, so you're a sex worker. Oh, you're another OnlyFans person. You know. What are you going to do? Mm. You know, like what's going to happen? <laughs> what do you got? Yeah. You're not going to be sexy forever. If yeah. I have one more person tell me, mm. you know, like, what are you going to do after this? You can't do this forever. Mm. The money's going to go. Whatever. Enjoy yourself. Whatever you're doing, enjoy yeah. yourself. Um, so it was not the plan. No, I, I had a, I had a life and a career and um, I refer to myself as, as the world's most unlikely porn star. Cause I still feel that way. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't supposed to happen, but I met Joel someone. And he, he met me and we just fooled around. We hooked up on scruff and he was like, you should be a sex worker. Like you should. And then it was like, you should do porn with me. Literally like after we hook up, like it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I can, yeah, I can see that. It was, it was case. interesting. Yeah. It was an interesting romance, like from the start, but that was, um, that was the start of it. You know, like he met me and he saw this for me and I wasn't unfamiliar with sex work. It was something, you know, I, I, Help Dab- put myself through dabbled. school. I was yeah, gonna say you've, there. you've dabbled there. before. Okay, yeah. yeah I've, and I always tell, I always see people that you know, like I'll meet these guys with these big dicks. I'm like, you've sold that once or yeah. twice. Yeah, you don't have to be. <laughs> you shy take with it, buddy. <laughs> you it's no um, shame. It happens more often than not, especially if you're putting your way through college for like medical school and all that yeah. stuff. I've I've heard various stories of strippers and. It happens. So yeah, it's it's there. It's yeah. very they're very they're very closely 
like wound together. Education's yeah. expensive in this country. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, you know, paying back my loan still, and this is it, helping a lot. Speaking of, right? So education's uh, expensive in this country. Um, you are naturally from this country? I was born here. Born I, here. I am Italian American. Okay. And I always had a very close relationship with my grandparents who were Italian, you know, from Naples mostly and from Messina. And I just, also I'm from Boston. Okay. So it's, if you've ever been there, it's like, that's the first thing people want to know. Are you Italian or you're Irish? Like growing up in my (laughs) era anyway, you know, but it's, it's very much like who you are is what your ethnicity is. You know, I've learned that it's not that way in the rest of the country. Mm. And it's probably not the best idea to say, Hey, where are you from? Or like, who are you? (laughs) You you? You relearn like what is polite and what is downright wrong so (laughs) what i but when i grew up like that was a big deal like to be italian american and but i also really connected with my grandfather and i spoke a lot to him as he was getting older about his childhood about they they make jewelry they still make jewelry in naples the family is still there uh, coral and silver and cameos that are beautiful So I always really connected to them and that was a big deal for me like I had to learn the language and I had to go and meet these people so all this stuff kind of came together, you know, when I met Joel, I was 40 and it was like, I want to be like everything in my life was ready to change, you know? And one of the things was I wanted to spend more time in Italy. Mm-hmm. And so I got my citizenship and I needed a career change. You know, I didn't know that I could do both. It's all kind of worked out magically. Yeah. Um, but those, those were two things that were really there. I relate, you know, when I, when I was younger, one of the guys that I loved, this is going to tie everything together. Yeah. It's so magical. It's one, of the, one of the guys I loved when, when I was, you know, my late teens, early 20s was Cole Tucker. Um, I just remember the movie Acres of Ass. You know, and I, remember, I wasn't expecting to tie this into ass play too, but no, he was, uh, he was somebody, I remember reading an interview with him and, and whatever age he was in his early 40s, just saying like, I looked at my life and it wasn't what I wanted. Mm-hmm. You know, and and just to completely reinvent himself. And that always stuck in my mind. You know, I had no idea that I would follow that same path. But that is, um, that's what's happened. I found what brings me joy, what Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about. I love sex. I love this industry. I love meeting people. Um, You know, like you always say, I've probably got you off. I love the fact that we get people off. Isn't that, it's crazy. And, you know, I don't think it's a very... um it's not, a, it doesn't, it's not meant to sound douchey. It's not meant to be, Ooh. but if you really think about what you're doing and what you're bringing to people who watch your stuff, yeah, yeah. you're, you're a part of their lives more than they think and more than you think. Okay. And I think that's, that's the fascinating part. That's what led me to, to this was, you know, I, I mentioned it before is having this break um, from, from raw fuck club, dark alley to treasure Island Ooh. and just really seeing all of these people take all these scenes that I never had time to um, appreciate and just go wild with them on Twitter. And, mm. you know, you think of what you're doing now, people are growing up to too. Cause everybody that wild. comes, it is, it's That's fucking so crazy. Wild. It's so so wild. in, in 10 years, you will meet people that will say, Oh my God, I jerked off to you oh. so much. Wow. And it, it happens now too, but it's that blows crazy. me away. Yeah. That blows me away. Yeah. It's still, it's still, you know, on, on the rare occasion, I'm on one of the, the sex apps, you know, like, oh, I, I've seen your stuff. Yeah. I jerk. Off. I'm like, the, I remember the first time it happened. I'm like, is he for real? Is he, you know, for yeah. real? Do but you ever, do you ever get those people that are like, oh, are you catfishing or? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, because sadly, people do use my mm-hmm. pictures to promote events and, 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 That's and scam people, which really, really. I remember Alex Teek has made a whole like Instagram live about it and be like, please people, I'm not inviting you to a sex party, please. And I'm glad to have this opportunity to say the same thing. You know, like if you see all these pictures of me inviting you to a sex party and saying, give me your credit card mm. to buy tokens to this party. It's not me. Mm. That sucks not that me. people can do that. And even like, yeah. like party people, party <sighs> organizers and stuff. But they're not even, in, I don't even think there is a party. Oh really? It's they're just, just, they just want <laughs> your credit card information. That's the oh, worst God. part about it. There's like yeah. no sex at all, but no, that, and I do feel some responsibility to, to, you know, I don't know. At first I thought like nobody's falling for this, right? Like if they're falling for this, they're giving money to the Nigerian prince, right? Yeah. Like to, <laughs> yeah. it's, but it's a whole new it's, generation it's, of stuff. The way they do it, like they have pictures of me with my friends. They have some pictures of me I'd never seen before. Mm. I was like, oh, I know where that was taken, but where did they get this? It's a little creepy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I get that. People do ask if I'm catfishing. Um, 
but no, people are people are really kind, and and the fact that they recognize me is was such a mind fuck. You know, that's still mm-hmm. taking me a while to get used to. I'm I'm there. I'm finally there. You know, you're good. I'm good. I'm like, yeah. okay, this is real. This has happened, and um, no, it's a thrill. It's a thrill that, and that's the best part of it, and that's why sex work I, I enjoy so much is because I made someone's day. You know, you mm-hmm. can't you can't beat that. Mm-hmm. You can't beat that. When someone says, you know, you made my day better by staying with me during this time, by getting me off, by making me happy, by listening to mm-hmm. me, whatever it is to provide that service. Um, there's no better feeling for me than that. That's why I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. When people recognize you, right? Yeah. Where are they recognizing you from? Where did you get your start? Where? How did it all happen when it came to... Well, sex work was first, you said, right? With Joel, yes. Okay. So that was... That was um, that was how he lured me into this world. <laughs> and it was like a little part-time yeah. fun. And, um, and then I wanted to get better at it and I wanted to make more money at it cause I'm practical, you know, it's like, I'm, yeah. I have loans to pay still. Yeah. no, you I feel you. <laughs> so I was like, how do I get better at this? And I remember I had like, I had lunch with Ray Dalton and this really hot Australian that he was filming with. And I remember asking them both like, you know, I want to be better at this I want, and I want to make money. And at the same time, they're both like, do porn. <laughs> it was Australian actually, yeah. do porn. Uh, and I thought, no, no, I can't do porn. Like, people will see it. Like, you know, it's, yeah. it was just, it was, it was still like, you know, three months later I was doing it. But to, in those three months, mm-hmm. like, it was such a, no, I will never do that. To, Here we are. Um, Joel was holding the camera for Cutler, um, for Cutler's Den. And one day I was just there with him in New York. And he's like, we have to go see Cutler. We have to finish. I just thought, can we just hang out? Can we just do anything? Like, why do we have to? I don't understand. So I'm there and suddenly I'm holding a camera while Cutler is fucking Alessio Vega. You know, it's gorgeous. I'm just like, wow, yeah. this is, I can't believe I'm here. And then, um, you know, he just looks over at us. And, and the next thing you know, like Cutler's holding the camera and we're fucking this boy. And uh, I was like, okay. I'm doing porn. Wow. So Alessio Vega was the bottom to introduce you in. Good intro. Oh my God. He was, wow. Isn't he great? It was, um, it was not difficult. (laughs) You know, sometimes you're on a porn set and you're like, can I get hard? Is this going to be okay? Mm. And watching it was so hot too. So to be a part of that, I think they they later like kind of spliced it together and they released it on Cutler's Den and I released it on my fan pages and I'm, uh, I'm grateful for that moment. And the next thing you know, I called Treasure Island and I got an interview on, I guess it was, I guess it was FaceTime and I did the whole, the whole tour. This mm-hmm. is my body. This is who I am. They called me right back and um, they asked me my fantasies, which is always a weird question for these porn things. They, they all want to know, like, I think it's like the getting to know you questionnaire. No, like, you want to know why? Like, who are you? What are your fantasies? They were thinking, everybody can say they're a top. Okay. But if you're a top, you're six one, and you, and you send us your first picture is a picture of you with your ass up. Yeah. You're probably not a top. <laughs> and if your fantasy is to get gang fucked by 15 guys, you're not a top. That's and what that it is. Ha- yeah. They can okay. say it all they want, but if you're thinking, oh, you know, I want to fuck four bottoms and I want to be the only top yeah. and I just want to, you know, come on yeah. all their faces and shit. Different story. Okay. But yeah. So you want to know if we can fuck. That's why you're asking. Yeah. We want to know if you're a bottom or you're a top. So a lot of times that's, that's the that's biggie. Interesting. I know a couple of times I've written, you know, like I, I love being in the middle, so I don't, I don't know what you do with that, but yeah. like only cast me in three ways, but I'm convinced. I, I also, we, we spoke about this, right? So you, you get cast a lot as a top people see you as a in top. America. Okay. In America. So in America. And then when I went to Europe, all of a sudden I was, I mean, maybe because all those European guys, they come in with these yeah. 23 Oof, centimeters, yeah, right. they say over there, like those yeah. nine inches. I'm just like, okay, I'm the bottom. I get yeah. it. I get it. I, <laughs> I get submit. It. I get it. I'm yeah. not, I'm not topping for Tim Tails. You know, I get yeah. it. I'm going to be the bottom. It's, you know, I, I yeah. knew why they called me. It okay. was not a surprise. Okay. So but you, I do both. Yeah. You're verse. I do both. You're truly verse. I Clearly. I mean, if I'm shoving fists in my ass, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am guilty, but not as guilty as other uh, producers of, Looking at somebody and saying, okay, well, this person, well, I have to work with them first, okay. right? If I see a verse, if, if you can stay hard throughout the entire thing, okay, you can probably get fucked and fuck, right? Yeah. It's not an easy thing to do even outside of porn, right? So if you're, if you're yeah. taking a really big dick sometimes, you're probably not going to stay hard the whole, I, I've seen it happen where yeah. even with flip flop scenes, right? Mm-hmm. One person's kind of like, you know what? Why don't you just let him top me? Because it's going to be really hard for me to stay hard. Uh, I can't stay hard when I get fucked. Yeah. I get it. But um, 
there are producers that will not hire people that if, if you say verse, they automatically go to bottom. Okay. Yeah. So that, that happens a lot. However, you think, is that an American phenomenon? Possibly. Okay. Possibly all American studios that I know. Cause that was my, that was my thought when I started working here um, was that I would have to market myself as a top and I, and I didn't want to do that because mm-hmm. it's, it's half the story of that, you know, it's, it's a part of who I am, mm-hmm. but I didn't, you know, especially I'm six feet tall. I know people meet me and they're surprised that I'm, I'm six feet tall. We'll do it. We'll do a standing picture later. Yeah. And they want me to be the big Dom rough muscle top, mm-hmm. which is fine. I can do that but that's not the whole story. So if I had to do film after film of that Mm -hmm. and people are looking at me, wanting me to be Austin Wolf, that's not what I am, you know, and it didn't feel right. Well, this is why I had somebody mention something about exploitation and my use of the word in porn, especially I don't say it in the negative way in a sense of like, you're, well, you're getting paid and they're using, no, I say it exploitative because we are basically saying that stuff that we do outside of work, and by that I mean producers, mm-hmm. stuff that we do outside of work can possibly not be the case on camera. You are a top. That's it. You can't be anything else. Yeah. And everybody, now your fantasy, the fantasy that we create is the fact that you're a top and that's it. Yeah. And that sucks. And that's in, in a way, it's only getting off on what we want you to be. Mm. So we're using you in a way uh, to get people off. But in reality... You are, you enjoy all of it. Yeah. And I, you know, I suppose if it was just, if I was solely focused on porn, I suppose I would be more um, obsessed with the image that I create, mm-hmm. you know, that Marco Napoli is this, and this is what you're getting. I think because I, I do the porn and the fan content and the escorting, I, I want there to be a more complete picture mm-hmm. of who you get when you meet me. Mm-hmm. You know, which and is I think also yeah. part of why I do this. You know, it's I, also very limiting too. I would think if you're just if you're just a bottom or you're just a top, like I would think so. Yeah, that, that's my personal yeah, take you, on it too. Unless you really really like it. Yeah, and, and if I <laughs> if I like models too, I, yeah, you're right. There are just there are definitely people that are just born tops right. and just born bottoms, and I get it. But they can do it five times a day. And God yeah. bless you if you can. And I've also I've run into models at bars and stuff like yeah. that, and. um and heard of other tops that go home and like fuck them, and, and you're like, oh, okay, well, there's no shame. I mean, I'm there not, isn't. I wouldn't there shame isn't. anybody on that, but no, this, yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we see, we see a lot we of know. them. And there are some total tops stuff. out there too, and I yeah. know who they are. And <laughs> you're lucky I'll give you their number. <laughs> so the first time we worked together, mm. um, oh, what a day that was. Yeah, that was the Damage Bottom Gangbang. <sighs> right. Wow. What was? What Can was? Can I the, just take a moment? Yeah. What was that like? Mm. Yeah. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. So that was at the IML in Chicago. IML 2019. And literally, Joel and I just got there. Um, you know, we flew in, took the train to the hotel, and that, I think we may have still had our bags with us. I oh, think, yeah. When no, we you got guys there. were. Yeah. And uh, there were, were there six beautiful men that we topped, uh, that we all topped. Uh, six Damage or seven, yeah. And it was his first scene. Mm-hmm. He had done a lot of content, but it was his first studio scene. I remember just him being like, it was a suite and he was in the other room and like, we were all kind of there like, can we see him? Can we see him? Like they opened the door like, hi. <laughs> yeah. So fun. We were trying to create some kind of uh, intrigue. Some tension. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I think it worked out pretty well. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, and it was so much fun. I get, I'm, since I'm not, I don't think of myself as a natural performer. Like I like a bit of direction. So I was a little bit hesitant you know so it was good the way that it was kind of organized like one at a mm-hmm. time they came in and joined the frame like i'm gonna watch a little bit and the cool thing was like just watching it got me so hard mm-hmm. you know watching jake morgan from behind wow i took yeah. a picture i'm like this is what your ass looks like i don't know if you know this because you can't really see your own yeah. ass yeah. this is what you look like <laughs> fucking yeah. this kid um that was a blast that was so much fun that was a lot of fun you know and I'm, my, and my actually... first scene my first scene with treasure island was that was a gangbang with those twins Yes. Yeah, you know, that's how mentioned. that's how I yeah. got started. So, you know, having having those scenes is it's really hot. Those are hot to watch and they're hot to do. You know, they're different than what I thought they were going to be having mm-hmm. watched them, you know, throughout my throughout my years yeah. as a non-porn performer. It's a little bit different, but my god, was it fun. It's also god, I think it it's fun. a really good introduction because of the idea that um you never know how you're going to act in front of a lot of people. Right? right? Especially in front of a video camera. 
So if there's more than one person, the tension or the nerves aren't all yours, you know, mm-hmm. like we all help each other, yeah, which I found yeah. on, on both of those sets. We all help each other. You know, we all give each other a hand yeah. literally and figuratively. Low you know, jobs, we, everything. We get each other. And if somebody, if somebody can't do the cum shot, we get them there. We get them there. there Especially these four guys. Oh, like, yeah. we're going to get there, you, like you. We're going to get you off. <laughs> there were, I think there's a picture of me on the floor and I have a camera in my hands and there's just dick all over me. I forgot what I was doing. Somebody took a picture. I was giving direction and boom, boom, boom. Four cocks. Right You're getting leaked all over. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, it's, I'm all right with that at this point. Yeah, those are battle scars at this point. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, to download that scene for personal use. That was that was so much fun, and he took it like a champ. He is really talented, mm. and just went right through and had fun. And, you, and that's awesome to see on a first shoot too. Mm-hmm. What are the studios? Because you've been you've you've been doing uh, stuff, doing a lot. Yeah. I mean, like so my my big break, I guess, was with Raging Stallion. Okay, and that was after the Treasure Island stuff. And what was interesting was because I was trying to do like a little mohawk thing and um, Raging Stallion saw my Twitter page and they're like, you know, we want you. We want to work with you. We want you to look less fetish, which surprised me because I, you know, again, not not seeing myself as a successful porn star. Right. Like I'm thinking like I will do some niche stuff. I'll have fun the way that I have fun in my private life, you know, with, you know, fisting top Mm -hmm. or bondage or foot play you know, the stuff that I, you know, just the fun stuff that I do, like I thought that would be where I would find my niche. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden this A-list studio calls me and says, you know, we want you to be a mainstream performer and, you know, but just don't look too fetish. I was okay. So that surprised me. I had to grow out my hair and whatever. Mm. It's not easy to do. (laughs) As I'm getting older, that's getting harder. But, you know, I just had to do a different look. Okay. And I had to do a different performance style. And it was fun. And I got a ton of exposure. They knew me all over Europe when I got there, which was amazing. Um, You know, I started to do performances in Europe and people knew who I was. Um, So that was a big break. And then when I got to Europe, you know, Tim Tails and Men at Play were, were the two that also, you know, got a lot of attention. And really dreams come true. You know, if you mm-hmm. had told me even 10 years ago, Tim Kruger would be fucking me. Yeah. I mean, that was not a hard come shot. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm literally, I, I still, I, I still use it to come today. Like I'm like, just close my eyes and imagine that Let's... Tim Kruger's right there staring at me with his dick in my ass. Like I might come just talking yeah. about this, you Very know? High. So yeah. things like that were, uh, those were, those were my successes in the last two years and they were wonderful. And, and now that I kind of come back and look at myself and say, okay, what's the next direction? You know, as I do this stuff in my private life, that's different from mainstream porn. Like, mm-hmm. what do I want to do? And is there going to be, you know, is there going to be a studio that wants to do different stuff with me? Um, I don't know. Stay well, tuned. Any, any, before we get into kinks, okay. let's talk about uh, hair. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah. So you, okay. And first of all, let's talk about how much bigger you are now. Your arms look great. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to show off a little bit. (laughs) I can see it. Yeah. That was the other, that was the other thing. Thank you. So when, when I, when I started working with other studios, I thought, okay, in order to be successful, all the things we tell ourselves, I was like, in order to be successful, I need to be 230 pounds. You know, and my first scene partner Mm -hmm. with raging was Alexander Kristoff, who's big, beautiful Serbian man. Oof. Um, And I thought I'm going to look like an idiot at 185 attempting to fuck this giant right like nobody's gonna watch that and i immediately was like you know this is stressful this is like when, when you when you think okay people are gonna see this you know I, I see why a lot of people sign up to do these movies and then back out you know because you can really kind of mm-hmm. get lost mm-hmm. in the i'm not gonna look good i'm gonna make a fool of myself i have no business being here you know all the imposter stuff so that was scary for me. And I remember when they took pictures, Mr. Pam took those pictures on my first raging shoot and they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I tell people I'm going to use them on grinder for the next 20 years. You know, it's like, (laughs) this is what I look like. Um, but when I, when I got naked, I was probably about one, 185, 190. And I told him, I was like, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I'm eating. Like I want, you know, I want to put on another 20 pounds and they're like, do not, don't do that. Like, this is why we hired you. we like your vascularity. Mm -hmm. We like your body. Please don't get too big, which really, really stunned me. It also made me feel so comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, like that was such a relief 
you know, because it's that vulnerable moment, like literally yeah. like, okay, I know yeah. you hired me. You've seen pictures of me. This is me. Here I am naked in the room. You're all dressed, like just pointing cameras at me and lights at me. This is me. And they're like, no, this is perfect. Like, thank you. And, and as somebody <laughs> thank you for making me feel good. About and myself. as somebody six one, it is not easy putting muscle on. <laughs> it is not easy. I don't like, I don't like to eat that much. You know, I'm yeah. not, you know, like we're two types, you know, it's the type that's like always struggling to, to put on weight and yeah. always struggling to, to keep off weight. For me, it's like, I'm not a big eater and I'm not like a, I wasn't a big lifter. I'm obviously I'm lifting a lot more now. I'm still trying to hit 200. And it may not happen. Well, you look good like this. Thank you. Please, yeah. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. hearing that. It's, you you know, and I try to tell people that too on porn sets, you know, because it's we're all the same. Mm. We're all the same. Everybody's like, oh, I don't have the perfect yeah. abs. I'm like, yeah. nobody's looking at that. Yeah. You know, for me, it's like, I don't have the biggest dick in the room anymore. You know, like when you're yeah. not doing porn, you know. Yeah. An above average dick I, goes a long way. It does. When you're, you're on a plane set next to Romeo <laughs> Davis, like, all right, shit, like, am I in the right profession? Yeah. You know? I remember being on a set once and um, there were like four or five guys and one bottom and the bottom had to take a break and I walk out of the room and I come back in the room and all these guys are arguing and they're basically arguing about their legs. That's a big thing okay. in, in porn. I had no idea. Well, that's a big thing working out too. And they weren't even arguing. They were kind of like, oh, yeah, well, I'm bigger than you. Well, at least I got legs. and blah. Like, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I remember just hearing in the back of my head. And I'm like, really? Is that where these guys are going? Come on. They look great. Like, it's it's, there's, it's crazy. Know, there's room for all of us. Yeah. There's yeah. really room for I, I celebrate the the stuff that I have. And I look at the guys that have, you know, like I mentioned, my, my raging partner, Alexander Kristoff. Like, I look at his body and I look at his thighs. And I'm just like... God bless you. Yeah. Just like, just squeeze my head in there, please. Just for just, a minute. Yeah. Just, just and, hurt me. <laughs> and, and what I think a lot of listeners, a lot of fans, a lot of people need to, or a lot of models should understand too, is, you know, the amount of dicks I've seen in my life and the, the yeah. beautiful people that I, I'm an average guy all around, like the amount of, pe amount of things, the fact that you can, you can still be around all of this and not have a complex in any way, right. shape or form. Like you guys, you guys are good. You guys look great. There's a reason why um, people follow you, people mm -hmm. love you, and people hire you. So, and that's and that's yeah. the thing to remember. And I and I do like and, and your directors make it easier when you remind us that it's like we hired you. We want you here mm -hmm. because of who you are. You know, I'm I'm the best Marco. You know, yeah. I know some other Marcos. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I but I look at my friends in in this industry. I have a lot of friends now. You know, for me, I was always that friend. I was always the one, like, I lived in L.A., I got to fuck all these porn stars without doing porn. You know, I had yeah. a great life. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, okay, now I'm going to do it, too. Yeah. And so now it's my friends, you uh, know, who yeah. are entering the industry. Yeah, yeah. Isaac X, who is making a huge wow. splash right now. We've been friends forever. You know, and I, and I tell him the same thing. It's like, people, people love you for what you have. It's like, look at your body, look at your flexibility, look at your tattoos, look at your face. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you've got you. Because yeah, I don't yeah. look like you, but, I'm not going to get your gigs. Like but you're absolutely we have gigs, right. I have my gigs. You have your. Like we're all going to be successful for who we are. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. And people have to know that too. That all these guys have feelings and you know, <laughs> stop trolling and shit like that. And um, uh, it, it, there's um, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people air too much shit on Twitter. And it just happened recently with a couple models that I know, and it's mm. it's fucking awful. Mm. Yeah, I know it's a, to the yeah, <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> you want some more? But that's a, that's a perfect example of shit that you can never take back. Like it's there. Alert the authorities if it's true, and if it's not, go home. Just let's grow up. We're all we're we're grown ass men. <laughs> let's grow up. Um, it's like you're just dangling it in front of me. Yeah. You're just dangling <laughs> I, it in front of me. It's just, well, you're just I, daring not me. me. You're just daring me, aren't I, you? You're I like, didn't put it like, up. Talk you know? about this. Talk about this. Come on, Marco. You have opinions. <laughs> no. What I will yeah. say is that I was very upfront with Joel from the start. We are not a public porn couple. Period. Mm -hmm. People know we're together. Some people are surprised that we're together because we don't do a ton of like filming together. Um, Which I, is good. And I, and I, I like also that. don't. You know, we celebrated our anniversary. His birthday mm -hmm. was recently. I put up pictures with him. I don't tell people where we're going, where we're going to dinner, what we're doing. I don't say, oh, my God, he's the love of my life. We're not doing a public engagement. Um, no. No. Like I, It's a private relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's that is 
of paramount importance to me. Like I need him in my life. He's like my biggest supporter. I, I would not be doing any of this without him. Mm-hmm. And it, it would be hard to do it, you know, without him now, you know, without having somebody we talk incessantly, you know, if we have a gig, if we're doing something, you know, like good luck with that. Hey, how did it go? Um, no, there's, there's definitely, I, I love that people see what I do and the work I do. And I want to be a little bit more open. Like I said, this is my first like interview as Marco, like doing, talking about the big stuff, mm-hmm. but it's like, there are, I'm a, I'm a Scorpio. I'm private. Like there's limits to where I'm going to go. There's limits to where I'm going to go. Um, and I don't read the comments. Yeah. Let me ask you about, uh, kinks. Okay. Do you have any kinks? I have a few kinks. Oh, Maybe some ASMR. Maybe I don't. I, maybe I don't know what that is. Is that electro? <laughs> ASMR is. I feel like we're getting very intimate right well, now. Well, yeah. ASMR is when you. I like whispering and I like dirty talk. <laughs> when people hear you drink and talk really low into a microphone. Really? Yeah. So we really are doing that. Yeah. No, we're doing it now. You know, Joel is Joel is the is the voice guy. He's, he's the one that like talks to these boys like, oh but yeah, you have no but you have it too it's yeah. in there you know what the cool thing is i've so i've been i've been cast as a therapist for more than one company now <laughs> and it was it was a, it was a career like option at one point in my life and so i love when i get to play the dirty therapist like i think this session would go much better if we were naked because you know i want you to trust me and and i think if if i'm naked and you're naked then we can really make some progress yeah. in your therapy like i'll really I mean, it's an added yeah. level of trust. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Have you been that's, doing? That's, that's um, the only thing. I'm. Pre- I, I'm pretty sure I saw you in. Um, is it Say Uncle or? Uh, yeah, for okay. that, um, that umbrella. I did. I did a couple yeah. of Family Dick, where I was this therapist. I got hypnotized by this by this child. <laughs> I say child, but they're like you know they're 21, yeah. which to me yeah. is like no, insanely <laughs> young. If I'm twice the age of of a model, then I'm, that's insane. Um, I did a couple with them. I did one with Brian DeVilla uh, for Therapy Dick. I forget the um, the media company umbrella that that was under, but it was another one where mm-hmm. I was a I was a kinky therapist. But yeah, no, I, I do I do like that kind of seductive thing. But it's not that's not like a big kink for me. What is a big kink for what you? What is a big? Kink? You know, and the funny thing too is it's also like doing porn, right? Mm-hmm. I'm learning what do I like and what do I like to watch. Okay. So I love bondage porn. I love watching these guys get tied up. And you got tied up too. Edged. Right? I've been tied okay. up. I've been tied up on film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it's, you know, in, in the porn, like as I'm watching it, it can't get intense enough, right? Like it's just like, <laughs> it's like I hear him kind of like whining and then I hear him like screaming, like, yeah, yeah. And then, then you come and then you feel guilty, right? So <laughs> it's a universal experience, yeah. right? It gets super intense. It gets super, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you come and you're like, yeah, what did oh, I do? Close this <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, you know, I'm a bad person. So, you know, what I've learned doing some of that is like, you know, like either, either I have to get myself into the mindset of the viewer to really fully be like, okay, like this is, this is the hottest moment for the viewer. Thus, this is the hottest moment for me. Cause other times, like, I don't have the widest mouth, <laughs> which is another reason I train my whole. Cause people are like, he's not sucking that dick. I'm like, well, you know, it goes in my ass. All right. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, so like when I'm gagged and tied up, like it's really suffering. And apparently that's true for everybody, but like, <laughs> yeah. for me and my little bird mouth, like it's really like intense. And I'm just like, I remember just doing this scene thinking like, am I enjoying this? Do I want to keep doing this porn? Um, you know, which is not what you want to be thinking during the middle of a porn scene, right? So, um, but I do, I do enjoy it. I do want to do more. I did a, I did one good scene with kink.com, which was a lot of fun because they, and they told me too that they were looking for more people who could switch, who mm-hmm. could do both, you know, so I got to flog my scene partner as well as get tied up. So that was really hot. Um, I'd love to do more of that, you know, and I, and I, like I said, I really, I see that as the direction my, my porn career will go. I think that's a good place to be, especially in your head when, um, you are thinking of what the people want to see. Yes. A lot of people just do it. It's, it's not that it's a selfish, um, industry or a selfish scene or yeah. it's, yeah, if you are very, very knowledgeable. And you can see it with models too, mm-hmm. but this is a little more when I, when I see a model, like kind of move and show their dick to the camera. Right. That's one thing. They know where the light is. Yeah. But Open when up. you're getting cerebral with your, your viewers, quite another level. 
That's when, when I, I know what gets me off, you yeah. know, and that's what I always thought I would be filming, you know? And so when I, when I get that opportunity, like, you know, my mind did kind of go there like, okay, like this is, this is what gets you off. Like do it for those people that mm. want it like a little bit more intense. It's not like, you know, I'm not going to die. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just about there. Like keep going. <laughs> the other thing people love, and I think I have them in camera. People love oh, feet. Yeah. Hold people on. love my feet. Let's, uh, so let me do, let's a little, do that. I'll do please. a little strip tease. Yeah. I'll move it down a little bit. People, people do love feet. I hope I feet. clean them. So I'm like, I have a huge foot fetish. You yeah. do. Okay, so to the full, like, yeah, yeah, no, you're yeah. good. There you Shove go. Shove this in your mouth. Um, no, so I think I learned that in Italy because the Italians love feet, love feet, interesting, love feet. It might be all over Europe, but like, never, you know, whenever I'm having sex in Italy, somebody's foot's going in somebody's mouth. Well, it just happens. My my boyfriend is really into feet, okay, so I've found myself now, and and we've been together almost six years now. And he didn't tell me this until like two years into the wow. relationship. Okay. And, he, and I was like, so when was the first time you looked at my feet? He's like, oh my God, it took me like a year and a half. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, what if I didn't have nice feet or feet nice enough for you? Yeah. He's like, no, luckily I got lucky. You know, I huh. peaked a couple of <laughs> times, but we never had that conversation. So it was, so yes, now I find myself going to get pedicures and yeah. stuff like that. Cause you got to maintain them. You yeah. know, I like to run. So I, I, I run like a mile every day. Okay. Um, and, and you kind of have to make sure you're soaking them and treating them like gold. You know, they do everything for you. And if somebody likes They're them and they want to put them in your mouth, I'm, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, it's very, very it's, important. It's a huge, it's a huge fetish community. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and I enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it. Like whether it's just the foot itself, like that's part of the fetish. Sometimes it's like the dominance part of mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm open. That's, but see, know? that's a big kink. That's a very big yeah, one. To, yeah. So, and you um, don't you don't see much of it. Yeah, you don't see much of it. Like when I when I was looking, you know, as I was starting in this industry, I was, I was like watching everything, you know, and, and the few like kind of mainstream scenes that I saw, you know, like every once in a while, the top would like kind of like lick the guy's feet. You could tell like he wasn't like. He was like <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, like, right next to like, I think that was meant for the foot fetish people. I think that was meant to titillate, yeah. but it didn't. Well, it didn't look real. I think uh, Champ went to San Francisco and he did some foot play. Okay. And I, I saw some of the footage and I remember being like, Champ, did you talk to these people beforehand? Or, or were they horrified? You, I was like, did you tell them? Because you have to let them know beforehand. Unless they're really into feet, you have to let them know <laughs> that they're going to, you know, have some feet. So you can see some of the guys are like, mm, you know, like <laughs> for like a minute. And then, you know, they kind of just went back into what they were doing. But awesome. do you... So I warn people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, I went to this fetish expo with people who are into macro. Have you heard of macro? No. You are probably on that thing. Do you, have you ever taken a picture where um, you are stepping on a camera or you are above a camera with your feet? <gasps> yeah. Okay. Then oh, you, I like that. You are in, Yeah. you are probably in a macro fetish site somewhere. Oh, I, I think I may have this fetish. Yeah. Thank so you. It's, it's um, the love of size difference. Right, mm. so you're above yeah. them, and you're like stepping on them. I love that. Okay, I love, so yeah. I mean, as a top, I love, I love like meeting guys who are like five two, five three, always. Okay, always. And as a bottom, like if you like six five, two fifty high, how are yeah. you? <laughs> but no, and I get that. And you know, what? the funny thing is, like going back to that first scene with with Alexander, like you know, at the end where I needed to come, like I had him come over and step on me. <laughs> okay, because he's so big and so beautiful. And, you know, you're it was the end of a long day. It was, and everybody's just like, all right, you need to come. If that does it. And I'm not there and there's 10 people and they're looking at me and I literally am like, you know what? This is not the time to be ashamed. This is the time when I come, period. Mm, all everyone right. wants to go I home. Was, you feel it. I was naked. I was <laughs> yeah. on the floor. I just, I like lay down on the floor and I was like, come here and just step on me. I'm just like, put your foot on my chest. And he was like, okay. And it was like a really hot, I think they, and they were kind of like, all right, you know, we're ready. I'm like, Give me this one minute. I'm like, this is my fantasy. Mm. This is going to, okay. you want to come shot? Yeah. You want to come shot? You're going to get your, and I got the come shot. Damn. Okay. Yeah, so, so I get, you know, you're teaching me things too. Cause these are things I don't think about, mm. but like in those moments, like things like that do get me off. So, uh, macrophilia. macrophilia. That's what it's called. And, and it's it. aphelia and, and it has like the guys usually call it size difference yeah. macro. Size play. Cause the, okay. you know, the philia. Yeah, exactly. Size play. Okay. Um, the philia part kind of, creeps people out because they're like, you know, there's too many files attached right. to shit. That's really bad, you know, <laughs> but, um, but awesome people, um, 
talk about getting cerebral. So the thing, the thing, but the thing for me too is like when I think fetish, I think like you need this to get off. And so there's nothing in my life that's that intense, that's that overpowering. Okay. But these are, you know, I just like too many things. Mm. You know, my my taste is too broad. Um, but that is definitely something that gets me off. Like that kind of. Um, I think it's related to like the whole dom sub play mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like that kind of ultimate. Um, dominance when like literally somebody's like standing on you and they're six feet taller and you're just like and a, you look you know, up and yeah you're, yeah i mean it's, you're getting it all you're yeah. getting it all you're getting, you're getting some <laughs> well good no that's that's really really cool i enjoy that if you if you are you know six foot eight inches tall and you have size 16 feet please my dms are open for you <laughs> thank you you've been watching demystifying gay porn i'm your host Ike grande Demystifying Gay Porn is available on every podcast directory, as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on X, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram. And if you like what you're watching or listening to and want to be a part of the creative process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifyinggayporn, where you can help support this audiovisual podcast and YouTube channel, and I can continue making content like you've just enjoyed. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. Thank you.